Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, October 4th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. The three-day geomagnetic storm has been pushed forward, and the first half may be a fizzle. Take a look at the current aurora forecast. Pathetic. Keep calm. It's boom time. Hurricane Helene update over 220 dead as some communities struggle to get basic supplies and the conflicting stories between the federal government and what's actually happening on the ground, well, is rattling some nerves. People are still searching for loved ones and many residents remain isolated because of the widespread damage. Here's what you need to know. At least 223 people as of... The making of this video have died and hundreds are unaccounted for in the destruction wrought by Hurricane Helene. More than a week later, some residents and communities remain isolated. Hundreds of thousands are still without power and spotty service has made communication difficult. As people dig out of the muck and survey the damage to their homes and cities, stories of heroic rescues and devastating losses are coming to light. And that is the current state of the rescue efforts. Uh, power outages still at two for over a half a million. It looks like about 600,000. Let's refresh this to get the best number. Two, four, five, six. Yeah, 600,000 plus still without power. The majority in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Well, the big story uh, over the last few days has also been the tropics. We've got a major hurricane, Kirk, sustained winds at 130 that's going to hook around here, take a look, and head right over towards the UK, hey, hey, and Europe. So that's going to happen um, midweek by the time it reaches those islands. And with it, it's going to bring snow and some substantial changes to the weather. We've also got Leslie behind it. Tropical Storm Leslie will become a major hurricane in the coming days, and we'll keep a close eye on that. While Disturbance 1 may bring up to 20 inches of rain for a swath across central Florida. Here is the full forecast. A strong bearing storm is impacting portions of Alaska with critical fire weather conditions in the Great Basin and the Northern Rockies. A strong bearing sea storm will continue to impact the Aleutian Islands and parts of southwestern Alaska today. High wind warnings have been issued for the entire Aleutian Island chain, so heed those warnings. Across the Great Basin and the Northern Rockies, strong winds and dry conditions will lead to critical fire weather conditions today as a strong Pacific system moves inland. And as it does, it may bring with it some record-breaking snows early in the season here. It is just the beginning of fall here, and we could see some epic mid-October snows. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Here is the worry that this low pressure is going to develop into a hurricane, potentially, moving its way across central Florida on Wednesday. Even if it doesn't develop in a hurricane, the amount of rain that's going to drop in this region is epic. Let's look at the last model run where you can see a tight Hurricane here running across the Tampa Bay, making landfall near Tampa Bay and Clearwater uh, on Wednesday. But the newest run is showing more disorganization, which may be good news, but still heavy rain, a swath of heavy rain is predicted for Florida through Thursday. Let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation, and I'll show you what I mean on the latest run. Not that fun. Once we hit yellow, that means 16 to 20 inches. And there could be a swath of that right there. All right. So bad news there as each model run is showing heavy rain for central Florida. Let's take a look at total snowfall and blow your mind. And we'll just move this through real quick. Systems will move across Canada, dumping snow to the high elevations. And then boom, this system dropping down. October 12th, 13th, and 14th, look at the epic snow for New England, uh, as well as the Rocky Mountains. That is 16 inches plus for the higher elevations for at least a half a dozen states. And Al Gore is not happy. Shut up, Al! Get your hole! No bunt cake for Al Gore tonight. Yes, he's on punishment. 
The unpredictable autumn cyclones and extreme cold risks are disrupting Italy and soon to disrupt the UK. The month of September 2024 represented a significant turning point in the Italian climate, highlighting a radical change compared to the weather patterns of recent years. Have you heard this? No, it doesn't fit the narrative. While in past summers seemed to extend without interruption, thanks to the persistent influence of the African anticyclone and high temperatures delaying the arrival of autumn, this year the situation is quite different and quite chilly. Even though some summer temperatures characterize some days, especially in the south and the major islands, the overall trend was much less predictable and deviated from recent trends. Yes, extreme cold is disrupting Italy and soon to disrupt the UK as Hurricane Kirk's aftermath could bring snow, strong winds, and heavy rain to the British shores. Hurricane Kirk, uh, strengthened to Cat 4 just the other day, is now weakening slightly in the Atlantic. And while it's not directly heading towards Britain, it looks like it's headed pretty close and it will trigger a spell of unsettled weather across the country next week. So be prepared. As UK braces for a 10C cold snap and a wall of snow impacting travel and tourism. So let's take a quick look over at the GFS map for Europe. It looks like Finland is about to get hammered in the next two weeks. Some snow for northern UK and the Alps as well. Starting midweek into the end of the week and the weekend. Now, this is nowhere on the media. Re record spike in earthquakes at Washington's high threat volcano sends researchers scrambling for answers. And this is an unlikely source. We're talking about six earthquakes recorded at Mount Adams volcano and they are increasing. A significant increase in the normal rate of just one or two every three years. So let's take a quick look over at the Pacific Seismic Network, and we can see Mount Adams here as this line, six earthquakes in the last 30 days, four in just the last 15 days, and you can see that stack of earthquakes on Mount Adams right here. Mount St. Helens also keeping true to the uptick that it's been happening over the last year. 84 earthquakes in the last 30 days with a flurry of activity in the last 10 days. So we'll keep a close eye on there for you. Let's take a look at the activity over at Mount Adams. We'll just blow this up. And as you can see, holy macaroni, what is going on here? Love to know what's happening there. <clears throat> These are, in fact, the Mount Adams quakes and... All of them just in the last two weeks. One, two, three, four. That is normally the amount of quakes that happens there in eight years. Now, this isn't really uh, fear-mongering because Mount Adams isn't a big threat. There have been 15 confirmed Holocene eruptions um, that are known. The last one was in 950 AD at VEI 2. All of them are VEI 1 or 2. So if the odds are that this volcano will erupt, it will be a small surface eruption, a little puff, and a pass. Seismic update. We've got moderate uptick in activity worldwide, nothing significant to report on. The Pacific Northwest is rumbling with a 2.6 uh, and a 3.7. So activity continuing up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, as the African Rift Zone is also getting a little jiggy, 4.7 in Tanzania. Worldwide Volcano News for the day, October 4th. Liwa to 10,000, Fuego to 15,000, Raventador 15,000 foot puff. Swanazima blasting a 7,000 foot puff. We've got Liwa to 10, Simaru, who knew, now you do on the list. Manam today, 9,000 foot puff. We've got Fuego as well, Sabankai to 20,000, Sangay on the list. Swanasima, possible puff there. Liotobi to 10, Raventa Door, 15,000 foot blast. Ebeko, 6,000 foot puff. Wraps up Worldwide Volcano News for the day. Quite a short list. Double solar eruptions are headed for Earth and potential intense solar storms, but the first half, the M7, is potentially a fizzle. KP is barely above three, and the auroral forecast is pretty embarrassing as well. Let's pull those up right here, and you can take a look. KP just hovering above three, 
No spike in telemetry here. Aurora forecast is bleak. Uh, there is still a three-day G2, G3 geomagnetic storm forecast, and I believe the second half will be slightly more spectacular than the first. Here is the modeled M7, and that supposedly may have passed us. It's going to be the X, though that was the X7. It's going to be the X9 that really pushes up, pushes us up, because you can see here that we may have just had the passing of the X7, and it did nothing. And so that is bad news for Aurora watchers tonight. But we do have good news. There could be an uptick. This could still be slow moving. The X7 might not have arrived. This could be an early part of the plasma. And we could see some reverberations pushing this up later tonight. But so far, it doesn't look good. But it does look good for tomorrow night as the second part comes uh, in the form of that X flare. Let's go back here and you can see that X7 there and then the X9 will be hitting tomorrow, about 24 hours later. And there are some other M flares behind it as well. So we could see some good Aurora, but I think tonight's Aurora forecast is, well, a dud. Now tomorrow, Lee and I are going to be covering the geomagnetic storm on our radio show in detail in the first 30 minutes. We'll go over what an X9 uh, means for this current Solar Cycle 25, how it relates to Solar Cycle 24, so you can get a grip on some space weather science. Moving on with science, we've got Bepi Colombo spacecraft's flyby of Mercury begins unraveling the planet's magnetic mystery. And this is what I find fascinating. It's really exciting to start seeing the link between the planet's surface and the plasma environment. What's going on with astrophysics? Are they starting to lean towards EU and plasma cosmology? I hope so. The article will be linked below. Another article coming out today. Changes in the moon's gravity hint at unexpected movement deep beneath the surface. The presence of a partially molten layer between the moon's rocky mantle and the solid metal core is looking more likely following a study on its changing shape and gravity. Researchers from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and the University of Arizona analyzed new data describing the moon's rigidity under the gravitational influence of Earth and the sun, finding its mass is unlikely to be solid all the way through. Well, who knew? Now you do. Now, we've reported on this before, but it's fascinating, and it's continuing to go forward. Chris Hemsworth's bag company plans to revive the wool woolly mammoth by 2028. That's just four years from now. And wow, holy macaroni. Scientists are working to resurrect the woolly mammoth, and it could happen in as little as four years, or even less. The Ice Age beast that went extinct might walk the Earth once again soon, and a company backed by Paris Hilton and Chris Hemsworth said, well, Colossal Biosciences calls itself the world's first de-extinction company. Will they be able to pull this off? It's anyone's guess, but pray for the future. And tomorrow, Lee and I will be talking about a new paper coming out today with a press release about two billion year old rock that they found that is harboring microbes from two billion years ago and they're still alive. Can you believe this? Here's the press release. Two billion year old rock home to living microbes. The new research could help us understand very early life on Earth and the hunt for evidence of life on Mars. Not only that, it might destroy humanity as we know it if this microbe is in fact dangerous. Lee and I will cover the topic tomorrow and the eye-opening discovery. Now, the oldest living microbes we know are 100 million years old. This is eclipsing that by 20-fold, so quite spectacular. Here's the paper. 
subsurface microbial colonization at mineral-filled veins in 2 billion-year-old mafic rock from the Bushveld Igneous Complex in South Africa. We'll break it all down for you tomorrow on Revolution Radio, noon Mountain Time in Studio B, and we'll replay it on Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube, 8 p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow night. And that's a boom. But first, our affiliate, the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, is restocking their coffers and they're moving to a physical location. But in the meantime, all the seeds are going to be a dollar per pack as more and more seeds hit the store. It, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to get the cheapest heirloom open pollinated seeds for your preparedness ever. Stock up. Buy 100 packs for 100 bucks. Get free shipping if you spend more than 25 bucks. That means 25 packs. And the opportunities are endless with more tomatoes, more corn, celery, peppermint sticks, peppers, and all types of offerings being added every day. Take a look at the green striped kushal squash. More and more being added every day and only a dollar a pack. Are you kidding me? We get a little piece, you get a little bit of preparedness. It's a double win. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. And duh, get the seeds. You will never have an opportunity ever again to get quality seeds like this for a dollar a pack. I assure you. Also, pray for those affected from Hurricane Helene. It helps. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.